Welcome to the uh, Worldwide Center of Math. We've been taking a look uh, today at some trig functions um, in attempting to measure angles uh, from the sides of a triangle or from the coordinates in a plane. Um, we can go ahead and find angles based on those uh, coordinates with inverse trig functions. So typically the inverse trig functions are denoted with either a negative one or an arc in front of it. Uh, I tend to like arc because some people can confuse uh, the negative one uh, with a negative exponent, which it's not supposed to be considered as. However, uh, you might see it denoted as that in most textbooks. So what we've done here is drawn out the uh, table where the inverse functions exist and their range. So um, basically all this is is flipped between uh, the domain and range of the normal trig functions are just flipped so that the inverse trig functions pass the horizontal line test. Uh, in order for a normal uh, trig function to pass the horizontal line test, you do have to restrict the domain. So if we think about the graphs of uh, all the normal trig functions and need to restrict the domain of them, we think of sine as a wave and it starts, sine starts at the origin and moves in a fashion like this. So sine obviously won't pass the horizontal line test because we immediately see that if you put that through, then it's going to hit twice. But if we restrict the domain, we have something a little bit more like that. So we go ahead and restrict the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and then we flip the domain in range. So the new domain of uh, inverse sine is negative 1, 1, and uh, the range is negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. This means that if we find an angle in quadrant 4, which is what we may come up with uh, if we're looking at uh, sine, we need to subtract 2 pi from it so that that value is in the range. Uh, typically this would be like finding uh, the angle is 7 pi over 4, but what you would do is subtract 2 pi and that angle is actually uh, just negative pi over 4. So uh, you can take a look at these, these values, uh, just compare them uh, with the normal trig functions. We're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at some examples immediately here. So we're asked to find inverse cosine of negative square root of 2 over 2. Well, we know that cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3, and we take a look at our table and see that we're looking for quadrant 2 because the range is 0 to pi. So we can immediately just go ahead and figure out that that is uh, pi, uh, 3 pi over 4 radians. And that corresponds to the 115 degree angle. If we're measuring from the uh, positive x axis, that corresponds to this angle. So go ahead and remember that that is a unit circle value uh, and cosine, uh, inverse cosine of negative root 2 over 2 is 3 pi over 4 or 135 degrees. So now we're going to go ahead and look at uh, inverse sine of negative a half. We know that sine is uh, negative in the third and fourth quadrant. Uh, so we know we're going to be looking to work in the fourth quadrant because um, that's where sine uh, inverse sine lives. So sine negative and a half. So we need to figure out which angle that is. Uh, think of the unit circle. And as you think of that, you know that the negative one half value corresponds to the value closest to uh, the x, the positive x axis, except in this direction here. So we would be looking for this angle to be 30 degrees here. And we can say either negative 30 or 330 degrees, uh, which is 11 pi over 6 radians. But again, because our range is negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2, we need to go ahead and subtract 2 pi from that. And that's going to leave us with negative pi over 6, um, which is negative 30 degrees. Now we can take a look at uh, inverse tangent of negative square root of 3. 
So we see that inverse tangent lives in quadrant one and four. The range is negative pi over two, pi over two. And we intuitively think that we're probably gonna have to do something similar with inverse tangent as what we did with inverse sine there in subtracting two pi. So tangent is negative in quadrants four and two. So we know we're gonna be working in quadrant four. Now these uh, are the coordinates that are gonna give us um, uh, negative rad three for tangent, um, which is negative rad three over two comma one half, which corresponds to the angle that's 30 degrees uh, from the negative y axis, or that angle right there. Um, we can drop this all the way down. That's a 60 degree angle. So it is gonna be negative 60. Uh, but again, we want to take a look at that um, in the range, uh, negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. So in order to do so, we're going to find that this is uh, 5 pi over 3, which corresponds to this unit circle point, but then we're going to subtract 2 pi. So uh, inverse tan of negative square root of 3 is negative pi over 3 or negative 60 degrees. So now we're going to take a look, uh, just a quick look at a triangle, and uh, we're going to find um, the values of a trig function from using inverse trig. So we have a 5, 12, 13 right triangle, a special right triangle, and uh, the value we're going to be asked to look for we're going to want the sine of the inverse cosine of 12 over 13. So we're not going to be able to find uh, an angle the, what the measure of the angle is, but we can find the angle that this corresponds to. So in this triangle, cosine, as you know, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this triangle, the 12 over 13 would correspond to uh, that inverse sine. So that corresponds to this angle here. And we can go ahead and rewrite this as sine of theta. And then sine of theta is just opposite over hypotenuse. So again, you want to be really careful when you're working with inverse trig because the domains and range are, ranges are uh, flipped between um, the restricted uh, normal trigonom trigonometry uh, functions. But they can be really, really useful in uh, finding angles. So just remember this point that you need to subtract 2 pi or uh, 360 degrees from uh, angles that you find in the fourth quadrant in order to get them in the proper range. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to know about inverse trig. Thank you for watching. For more math videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Or for additional resources, including affordable digital textbooks, please visit centerofmath.org.